welcome back to the Algarve. The sun's out and I'm enjoying a ride out in the hills here with my mate on his 2021 Trident. Now, I've had my 2022 Speed Twin for about a month now and covered about 750 kilometers. So I thought now was a good time for a quick run through what's good and what's not so good about the bike I'd always promised myself. So let's start with the negative, shall we? I've been thinking about this list pretty much ever since I took delivery of the bike and regular viewers will know that I always do my best to be objective. Just because I decide to buy such and such a bike doesn't necessarily make it more enjoyable than X or more comfortable than Y. In fact, I go so far as to say that I pride myself in picking holes in every bike I get to ride because most if not all reviews by professional journalists that you see on YouTube seem to be just adverts for the bike they've been invited to test. If anything, I prefer overly critical reviews. My last three bikes were in chronological order, the Honda CB500X, which was underpowered and plagued by vibration, the BMW F900XR that had a lacklustre engine and poor quality control and of course the Triumph Trident which while easily the best of the bunch had a handful of cheap components on it that were a constant reminder to me that it was built to a budget. So I sold it for this, the 2022 Speed Twin, the subject of this video. The things I like and dislike. Okay, here we go, enough prevarication. It's a relatively thirsty bike, obviously with a big capacity engine. I'm averaging about 5 litres per 100 kilometres, which equates to 56 miles per gallon UK, 47 US. But I am used to relatively spirited riding, and I do leave the bike in sport mode all the time, which probably doesn't do the mileage any favours. While this doesn't worry me too much from a cost standpoint, it does mean that range isn't fantastic, and I seem to need to fill up more often than my mates do, when we're out on a group ride. A larger fuel tank would spoil the bike's lines of course, so if anyone knows of a way of getting 25 litres of fuel into the standard 14.5 litre tank, please let me know in the comments. I wish it had a fatter rear tyre. It absolutely does not need one dynamically. In fact, wider rubber would just hamper the cornering. But I've got this thing about fat tyres, so a 180 would be nice visually. I didn't really care for the high-vis yellow flash, so I covered that over with some brushed aluminium effect vinyl, and it looked as though Triumph had let a work experience loose on the clock dials, so I swapped these for a cleaner design. Final niggle was the cheap-looking rear shocks, the top part of which I found I could literally compress between my thumb and index finger, so they had to go in favour of a pair of fully adjustable YSS shocks. Uh, incidentally, if you want more details of the many modifications I've already made on the bike since I got it, click on the link in the top right now or in the description below later. Now, I'm sitting here fully aware that I did promise you a list of genuine meaningful bad things about the bike and as viewers of previous videos will testify, I am usually quite proficient in picking a bike to bits, but I'm honestly struggling with the Speed Twin. Apart from the silly impossible negatives like not being able to put more fuel into the 14 litre tank or wishing that the purchase price was half what it is, I really can't think of many. It's not that there aren't any negatives, but rather that they vanish from my thoughts as soon as I start riding. All the important stuff is there, fantastic engine, beefy brakes, good suspension, although I have changed the rear shocks, yes. Um, the LCD screens in the clocks are a bit small and hard to read. But would I want Triumph to fit a BMW style 3D color ultra wide touch sensitive high definition screen with 120 hertz refresh rate and integrated photorealistic sat nav and live Facebook streaming on my motorbike? No thanks, I'll stick to the difficult to read LCDs. I suppose one real negative might be that the Speed Twin isn't really a beginner's bike. In fact, I recently had this very same conversation with my eldest son who's taking his bike license as I write and is looking at treating himself. Get the Trident by all means, I said. Fine bike, accessible, but one that you won't tire of after a couple of months. But I would steer clear of the Speed Twin for the moment. But of course, that's more an indication of novice riders inexperience. I can't criticise the Speed Twin for being too hot to handle. 
at least figuratively, because on a literal level it's a different story. The 1200cc engine gives off a lot of heat, and as Triumph have gone for a small capacity radiator, no doubt for aesthetic reasons, the fan seems to kick in every time I stop or even slow down for a roundabout. Now my dealer has assured me that this is normal, as have other owners, and having the peace of mind of a full two-year manufacturer's warranty, I can live with it. But coming from the Trident with its oversized radiator and relatively small capacity engine, the eagerness of the fan on the Speed Twin did come as a bit of a surprise. Wind protection is almost non-existent and the tiny fly screen I've fitted does nothing to improve that. But I knew that before I bought the bike and the screen. I like Naked's precisely because of the heightened sensation of speed. Now many bikes look great with the addition of bodywork, others are perhaps less successful and although there are aftermarket kits designed to smooth things out on the Speed Twin, I think I'd rather have the wind to be honest. A potential negative if I lived in the UK, I might be concerned about how the Metzler Racetech RR tyres would handle the damp cold winter roads. They're fantastically grippy here of course on the almost permanently warm tarmac but I am a bit surprised Triumph chose them for a general purpose bike like the Speed Twin. Surprised, but also very thankful because, as I say, they're ideally suited to warmer climates like this. Finally on my wish list would be a quick shifter, sort of. Now I love the one I had on my Trident, the auto blipper on the downshifts was great fun, even if it is ultimately a bit pointless unless you're racing on a track. Thing is though, as much as I would like one on the Speed Twin, its engine doesn't really lend itself to blipping. I've already compared it in a previous video to an E39 M5, probably my favourite car of all time, and in much the same way as the M5 would be spoilt with a fancy dual clutch, clutch gearbox, as indeed BMW managed to do in the subsequent E60, the Speed Twin is just fine with an old fashioned clutch lever and fully manual gearbox, so I do get why Triumph don't offer a quick shifter. So to the good points, where does one begin? Well, as you've probably realised, this bike is all about the engine, really as simple as that. My goodness, what an absolute gem it is. It completely dominates the ride and you very quickly forget all the aforementioned niggles. Sounds good too. simply the way the bike looks. It's how a 10 year old would draw a motorcycle. Two wheels, a flat seat, teardrop tank, twin clocks and a thumping big engine slung beneath the frame. And while I'm still not wholly convinced by Triumph's choice of a yellow flash on the tank, there's no denying that the matte grey paint is of outstanding quality and looks great. At least the uninitiated, my wife for example, the Speed Twin looks like an old fast runabout from the 1970s and that's one of the things I love about it, a real wolf in sheep's clothing, a sleeper because it goes like absolute stink. Whatever revs you're at, whichever gear you're in, the throttle is constantly egging you on. Go on, squeeze me, twist me, hurt me, whip me. <laughs> Can a Speed Twin be ridden sensibly? Probably, but I don't, I can't. As I said in my first video on the bike, it's not the fastest bike I've ever ridden, but it's most definitely the bike I ride the fastest. I ride it faster than I used to ride my 2017 Street Triple, for example. I can't help myself, and I love it. Proof of this is the fact that no other bike I've bought new has gone back in for its first 500 mile service this soon after delivery. With the Speed Twin, I'm genuinely looking for reasons to take it out for a run, and when I'm out on it, I'm genuinely hoping there'll be some slow traffic ahead, like this, just so that I can delight in overtaking it. BMW M5? Okay, maybe a tenuous comparison, but the Speed Twin definitely has something of a mini Triumph rocket about it. Of course, that's the bike that prompted me to launch this YouTube channel in the first place, hence the name, and which I seriously lusted after until I actually rode one. Put simply, despite its many qualities, the Rocket, for me, is just too long and too heavy. 
whereas the speed twin hits the sweet spot on so many levels physical size, visual discretion, available torque, usable power and price at least compared to the rocket and perhaps most importantly fun. Yes the rocket blows your mind with its immense power in a straight line but the speed twin gives you almost the same levels of excitement in so many more situations. Riding position is also spot on for me, surprisingly sporty for a so called classic with nice wide bars making for a relatively aggressive stance. You're certainly in a much sportier crouch than you are on either the Tridents or the other Bonnevilles, although thankfully it is less hardcore than the Thruxton. Some people complain about the seat comfort and I must confess I was expecting the worst from what looks like a plank of wood with some vinyl wraps around it, but no, I have found the seat no less comfortable than on any other bike I've owned. It seems to support my sits bones adequately and the lack of any angle or scalloping means your groin isn't being constantly encouraged into intimacy with the tank pad. It's fair to say the Speed Twin wouldn't be my first choice on a 3000 km trip around Europe, but that's not the kind of riding I do, so as far as I'm concerned the standard seat is fine. The Euro 5 fueling means the speed can be a bit jerky on low speed roundabouts or around town at least until you fit the throttle spacers which alleviate if not completely resolve the issue. If like me a motorbike is your guilty pleasure, a toy that you take out a couple of times a week for a blast in the hills or a drink with your mates, rather than a tool you use to commute to work every day, then I can't think of a bike I'd rather have. I get a lot of wry comments from viewers who say yeah you'll have sold it by this time next month and it is true that I've chopped and changed a fair bit over the last couple of years but I can honestly go on record today and say that currently there is no bike on the market I would rather have than the 2022 Speed Twin. So I'm afraid I have failed in my quest to find any major failings with this bike. Any that there are can either be fairly easily rectified or pale in comparison to the positives. I can't overstate how satisfying it is having this much torque this low down in the rev range. Ok the Bonneville T120 I tried a few weeks ago produces nearly identical torque even lower but the riding position, different fork rake and 18 inch wheel combine to efface any sporting pretensions the bike might have. There's the BMW R9T of course which I've ridden uh, but it's about 25% more expensive than the speed here in Portugal and my recent experience with BMW has put me off them for a while. It is probably the Triumph's closest competitor though at least until I can try the new Kawasaki Z900 RS SE in the spring. For the moment though and for the type of riding I do here in Portugal the 2022 Speed Twin is about as close to motorcycling perfection as I've found so far. I urge you to go and try one, and as always, thanks for watching.